Hey, how you doing? This is Paul from Paul's Carts. Today I just wanted to bring this big block cylinder head. 3834 uh, welded intake tube, stainless valves. We got the bronze guides. We got the spring package cut. We got the multi-angle valve job. We got the dual 60 coil, 65 pound springs. We got titanium retainers. We got keepers. Uh, we got all that uh, and more. Uh, customer got a good rundown of stuff here, big list of parts, pages on pages of stuff. Um, his order is going to be going out hopefully tomorrow, just finish this up now. Uh, so before I did it, I haven't made any videos this week. I've been slam bammed with cylinder heads. And uh, for all you guys out there that have just been getting your heads without videos, I'm absolutely sorry. I just don't have the time to do it. I love you all and thank you all for the business. But I uh, got this big valve head here for Charles, um, 3834 uh, welded intake tube. So the welded intake tube on the big block is great uh, just for port design, port shape. Um, and uh, you can really get a lot of velocity down through the port with the welded intake tube. That goes for small block, big block. Uh, not having to deal within the um, confines of the bolt pattern on a manifold really allows you to open up the port and get the velocity and CFM requirements for that engine a lot easier. Uh, it's not necessarily always about, oh, we need all this more CFM, but it allows you to shape the port differently than you could without having a welded intake tube. This allows you to fill in low velocity areas that aren't necessary um, and really get an optimum port shape. So we have a 3834. As you can see, throw the valves in real quick. 3834 stainless. Uh, <clears throat> milled down the head a good amount to get the compression ratio up. Big thing in a big block. It's really tough to get that compression ratio up. That's why you see a lot of the ones that we do are welded big valve heads and stuff like that. That compression ratio in a big block, trying to get that 12 to 1, that should be your goal. Um, and anybody that's got a big block head, you should be just chasing that 12 to 1 number to run your cam, to get the timing events, to dump the exhaust pressure fast enough to really um, get the engine working the way it should. It's all about trapping air. Um, he did get the PKBB RPM3, which is the big block version of the PK RPM3. Um, that is what we've found to be the best big block cam. Now we've done a lot of testing with big block cams, especially from the uh, small engine competitions we were doing back in 2018. Um, we were all big block all the way. So uh, big block is where we really cut our roots. As you probably know, the channel uh, technically is Paul's Carts Life in 420. Life in, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but Life in actually designed the GX series for Honda. So Life in is the Godfather. Um, so we got this uh, welded intake tube, 3834, multi-angle valve job. Now I've said it before, uh, one of the most important areas on the engine is getting the air in and around the intake valve. So, uh, you know, before the seat and after the seat is the most important part of the entire engine. Um, if you think of uh, an engine as an air pump, uh, and you're trying to get air in and out of it, compress it with some fuel and spark it off to get onto that compression stroke. Um, the biggest impediment to getting that air in there is this intake valve being closed in the way. So getting air in and around that intake valve is the number one goal for any cylinder head designer, for any engine builder. Uh, once you get past like uh, ring seal, stuff like that, it's cylinder head flow and getting that air in and around that intake valve. So. Uh, the way the port is shaped in the bowl and the transition to the seat and out of the seat is really the main focus or should be the main focus of anyone doing cylinder heads. Um, when we've done work on the flow bench and stuff like that, uh, you could do major work upstream in the port and uh, major work on the seat area and the work on the seat area is going to net you bigger gains every time. It's just because that seat and the way the fl air flows around that seat is the main area of focus on the cylinder heads. So getting the air through this little area, this little area right here is the main focus of porting and doing the cylinder heads. So uh, if you had to, ch uh, to pick between 
uh, a very well ported head or getting some uh, real good seat work and approach on the seat work, uh, the seat work would net you probably more CFM uh, and more power, therefore, than the port work. So uh, this shape, especially in big blocks where you have thicker seats and you can really uh, go, get a good seat design on there, uh, this is where you, it's make or break in big block heads. On small block heads, the seats are so small that alter, I know this is going to sound horrible coming from a cylinder head uh, person, but you really cannot get an uh, ideal seat design on a small block head. I know that sounds weird, but the seat is too thin. You actually need a little bit of seat material uh, to be able to, to cut the right angles. You can get, when, within the small block heads, we work with what we have and we get that to flow the best. You obviously want to go with the nice 3228 over a 2725, obviously for its obvious reasons. But even on the 2725, uh, the seat the the width of the seat is like uh, i forget what it is exactly but it's like less than a quarter inch it's like an eighth inch thick uh seat wall so that's really small so once you get in there and you pour and you and you blend it all to the port and stuff like that that gets knocked down even further then you start cutting your angles on it and you're left i mean if, if you take a seat out that's actually been finished and blended to the head and seated and then you just cut that seat out, it's like a little piece of tin can that's left in there. There's really no seat in those things. So that's why we went to such a uh, extent and time consuming process to bring those seats to the market in the small block stuff. Everyone says like, oh, we have non suching seats too and they're just using... Uh, other standard seats that are out there is something like uh, just putting in an intake valve and yeah obviously the intake valve is not going to touch the exhaust valve but when it comes to a 3228 seat setup we've messed with the IDs the seat material um, and uh, other other uh, factors besides just the OD of the seat to get those seats to work so well so enough about small blocks so back to the big block um, so when we do our angle valve job we'll cut um, we'll probably start off with the 60 just to get some of the seat material out of the way. Uh, and then we'll come in, uh, with our radius cutter and we'll, we'll cut the radius into the chamber or start it. And then what we'll do is we'll come in with our 15s, our thirties, the 60, play that back and forth, throw it back on these and out of the cylinder head, I would say 40% of all the time spent on the cylinder head is doing the valve job. 40% of the time. Now, if you guys that sit there at your house and, uh, you know, port and port and port and port for a week on end, just think about 40% of the time we spend on the valve job. So if you're taking a week to do your porting, then you should be taking like two days, two days and a couple hours doing your valve job alone in those type of time frames, percentages, etc. And, you know, guys that work at home, that's fine. I mean, if you have the skills in your hand, you, I could be in a cave. You know, it's not the walls to a shop. It's not anything besides the man with the tools that does the job. So I'm not, you know, if you're, if you're at home doing it, I used to do it in my kitchen, believe it or not. In my kitchen, I used to build engines and that kind of grew and grew and grew and grew. But it's the person with the skills, you know, uh, I've, I hear guys that are out there, uh, marketing as, uh, you know, uh, they'll say stuff like, uh, oh, fabulous new facility. And is the facility building the, the, the engine? Think about that. Is it the facility or is it the man with the tools? Cause a facility can hire guys that make seven bucks an hour. And I wouldn't want any guy that's making seven bucks an hour that didn't even graduate, that doesn't have his GED, uh, porting on my cylinder head, trying to get what he thinks looks like a good flow uh, through that, um, just to sell a part. Any cylinder head that leaves here is touched by me and only by me. Um, I don't have employees that do cylinder heads. We have guys that will do shipping, uh, family members that do some of the uh, websites and office work, my father. Um, my wife, my daughter help with shipping. We have a dedicated guy for shipping. He'll also do some of the deliveries and stuff like that. But ordering, um, keeping stuff in stock and uh, doing the selling the heads is yours truly. 
So we got bronze guides in this head. Bronze guides, as you guys know, are always great for lubricity factor, uh, the way they interact with the stem. Uh, you want to keep uh, 1.2 thousandths um, between the stem and the guide. That's the minimum diff, the minimum distance of three oil globules. So three oil globules is 1.2 thousand. So that is the distance between the stem and the guide. So just in case you have a little bit of uh, pinch points during that, having a bronze guide uh, rubbing on the valve is much better than a steel valve because of the lubricity factor that uh, bronze guides have. Um, when you guys get your cylinder heads. Uh, even if it has a great valve job cut into it, you definitely want to go into uh, always lap your valves. We'll always send this uh, little bag with the valves in it. It always has this little note how to lap your valves. I even give some tips on uh, how to really get a good seal, uh, stuff like that. So always lap your valves. Lapping your valves, guys, is so important. If you guys are out there racing every week, you know, and you bust your head off to check your head gasket, Lap your valves. Any chance you can get to lap a valve, if you're in there, lap your valve. Lapping your valve is only going to help you. Um, I just saw on uh, Facebook, maybe, or YouTube, those quick little shorts videos where a guy's on a surty machine, he's doing his pressure test, and I've done this before in the past, and I know it's the truth, but he takes one human, he'll put the valve in, he'll do his pressure test, his pull is vacuum, it'll pull negative 8 bar or negative 7.5 bar, Boom, it's a good seal. He'll take the valve out, take a single human hair, lay it across the seat, and put it back in, do the vacuum test, and boom, it'll fail. That's all it takes, and that puts it into reality for people. A human hair is enough to destroy a valve seal. So anytime you can lap your valves, lap your valves, especially in small blocks with the 3228, especially if they're not from me. We've tried to remedy that problem. There's still very thin seats in a small block, and you guys still do push them to the max, especially if you're on gasoline, always lap your valve. Methanol, one of my cylinder heads with those custom seats in there, you're probably going to have less problems, but always check your valve seal. Besides piston ring seal, valve seal is it. There's no, you can get all the air, you can get all the air in. You can have all the compression, static compression ratio in the world. You can have your cam timing to trap this mixture perfectly. But if your ring seal's not there and all of that stuff is just squeezing past, going down into your oil, there's a reason for that. Your valve seal is everything. So you got to have great piston ring seal and you got to have be able to seal that up and bottle that up because having that bottled up is what's really going to bring your power level from, say, like, 1.5 to 1.7 horsepower per cubic inch now that's a big difference and that's what we try to aim for here is that difference in horsepower per cubic inch so uh my wife just got uh here she just walked in kind of interrupted things so i'm going to end this video now i'm paul this is paul's carts check out the website paulscarts.com if you need to contact me you can go to the contact us button on the site that's through site contact. You can contact me through email at paulscarts at gmail.com or you can text or call 781-492-7358. Guys, thank you for watching. I'm Paul. This is Paul's Carts. And until next time, guys, have a nice day.